So today we are going to have a look at this um, reverb tool from Ableton. So we have a piano track over here. I'm using a, a grand stretch piano from the Ableton Pack grand piano. And I'm letting it play those notes. And um, But we are going to focus, we are going to solo this track over here. And we are going to focus on the reverb. So let's drag in a new v reverb from the audio effects, instruments, audio effects. Um, go to a reverb, drag this here, and that's the initial that you're getting. So this Ableton reverb it takes the signal from the piano and it does input processing. It applies a filter on the input signal. Then it treats early reflections like very early reflections like from the wall of the room like a direct reflection from the wall of the room and then it has global settings over here and then it has a long tail this diffusion network what they call diffusion over here is the tail of the reverb so this is the early reflection of the reverb and this is the tail of the reverb over here and we have some uh, possibilities of um, mixing those two parts. So um, let's have a look at the early reflections first and take out, that's that's the volume knob for the early reflections and that's the volume knob for the for the diffusion, for the late diffusion. So let's take this down. We have a dry wet knob over here telling us how much the reverb is being applied and let's leave this over here. So right now we shouldn't listen to any reverb. We only have a recorded piano sound applied to those MIDI notes over here. So I'm taking up the dry red knob over, over here now. And we are listening to the early reflections. So um, with the input signal, we are right now, we are processing already a, a high cut filter on top. Let's take that out. And we also use the spin over here. Let's take it out as well. So now the input signal is getting through without any input processing. Um, let's take out some low frequencies. Activate the high, a low cut and take it up to maybe 1.3 and um, that's the bandwidth of our filter. Let's make it broad, very broad. Take out some of the highest frequencies as well in the, maybe like this. So um, that's a processed input signal over here with two filters, uh, high cut and low cut. And now what is the pre-delay doing? Pre-delay is actually um, the amount of milliseconds of the initial signal that we are not using any reverb on top. So what, what does that mean? Let's drag up the wet all the way and apply um, a long decay time and put on the diffusion, like the second tail, and you will see what the pre-delay is actually doing. No pre-delay. So the initial signal, the dry signal is already gone. So let's try to move it up to a lot. So you see if you um, use the pre-delay and you don't have your reverb completely in the wet zone then you will have the dry signal and then after the pre-delay time the reverb will be applied. You notice the reverb is coming always later now. It's very noticeable with the first hit here. That's what the pre-delay is doing. So let's take it back to this value maybe 
and go to the early reflections. The early reflections uh, are basically the reflections from the walls of the room and show some characteristics of the room. And um, you can mess around a little bit with, uh, with those reflections. Like this really extreme. For, for the moment. So um, what shape, oh, let's leave them like this maybe. Shape. Shape is a um, knob that emphasizes the early reflections and the transition with the diffusion. So if I have a small shape value, for example, um, the reflections last longer and the diffusion, like the back tail diffusion, will start early. We'll, we will have an overlap of still ongoing reflections and already applied diffusion. Now, if I, if I go to big values of the shape, we have less overlap and a clearer signal. Those are like always depending on what types of sounds you're using. It's more noticeable or less noticeable. That's what shape is doing. The spin was modulating the early deflection, reflections, intensity and frequency. And you get this Doppler effect kind of feeling if you go up there. You can turn it off to save power as well. Speaking about saving power, uh, CPU power, um, echo mid high uh, are quality modes and high will use up a lot more CPU. But sometimes for recording that would be nice. Maybe in a live setting you don't really need it. Um, in high quality. So size size is a parameter that tells you transition between a metallic, very metallic and a more diffuse reverb. So let's let's have a look at metallic. This small size it's very metallic and like this is like with higher size it's very diffuse. Sounds nicer to my ear on a piano like this, not, not too metallic. And the stereo is actually the stereo width of the output uh, signal. It has a maximum of 120 and in this case every ear gets an independent uh, channel of reverb and if we go down to zero, we have a mono. And now let's go to the diffusion. Um, the diffusion tail of the reverb, we have a decay time. So how long does it take um, us to reach minus 60 decibel of the initial amplitude? Three seconds over here. After three seconds, almost everything is already gone. And um, yeah, you can increase that a lot to 60 seconds, one minute. We have a filter over here, another filter. We have a high frequency uh, filter and a low frequency uh, filter. It's the frequency related to the diffusion of the reverb. Like we can absorb the high frequencies by turning this up. And, and, and in real rooms, this also happens. Like for example, people uh, air or walls, they, they absorb high frequencies of their signal and um, we can have the, the, like the diffusion less diffuse with taking out a little bit of the low signal. You don't want too much reverb in the low frequencies anyways. But with this high played piano you don't really notice low frequencies so it's, this is more for mid frequency range sounds um, and taking out there or for a snare for example if you have a, a snare with a lot of mid frequencies you can take out a lot of the low um, if you want to apply some reverb on top and um, freeze what does freeze do it actually freezes the signal of the 
reverb tail. Reverb simply doesn't stop, it gets frozen. So let's have a look. Like it stays there. If we have it active, it stays there. But we can uh, put on the cut knob as well with it to make sure that no new input signal gets added to the reverb and stacks up and creates this really weird sound. Well, but we need some freezing first. And um, we also have the flat button. That one bypasses the high and low shell filters when the freeze is on. So you can decide yourself if you really like to use this or you don't. Density is the density of the diffuse reverb, like how higher values produce denser ones and uh, lower values thinner echoes. We also have a scale, which is actually um, working on the sharpness of the diffuse reverb part, and it has a big effect with small room sizes. So if we go down to the with the room size over here, we take this off, we go a little lower in the decay time and the size gets smaller, maybe like this, and now we scale. So it's smoother with higher values. And it gets pretty sharp with low values. Let's go back with a higher size and a longer decay time. We have a chorus left over here. So this chorus modulates the diffuse part as well. And you can set the frequency and the amplitude of the chorus. exaggerating uh, to show you how it works and now we have those knobs left over here that one was controlling the amount of the early reflections we want to use that one diffuse part volume and that one is the overall application how much do we add to the input signal how much of the reverb do we add to the input signal and um, let's play a lot around a little bit So that's how this reverb is working and what the knobs are doing over here. We are we are going to prepare some, some presets for that in a while and put them into our Ableton Suite preset pack as well. For now I'm going to, uh, I can quickly show you maybe a nice and warm reverb. And a small one. Short and small room size, and um, what is that one? That's the deep house long one. That's the actual, actually the one that we are using in this template over here. So I hope you uh, you got a little bit some information on this reverb and 
you enjoyed the tutorial um, make sure to subscribe to our channel and um, check out some of the other videos and this entire template is available as well check the description and see you next time bye